Okay, let's use the junction rule and the loop rule to find the electric current and the value of the electric field in the circuit. So this is a simple circuit where I have a thick wire connected to a super thin wire and this is hooked up to a D cell battery with a with an EMF of 1.5 volts. So here are the other parameters I have. It's copper wire. So copper has an electron mobility of 4.5 times the negative third, blah, 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 meters per second, newtons per coulomb. The electron charge carrier is an electron, so it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And the charge carrier density is 8.49 times 10 to the 28th charges per cubic meter. So for this wire, I have picked, oh, I didn't get the lengths. Okay, I'll write that down. So I picked a reasonably wire. So this is actually a pretty thick wire of 0.4 millimeter diameter. I'm just giving it in diameter, not because that's easy, but because that's what's common. And then this one's really, really tiny with a, a diameter of 0.01 millimeters. Uh, so the length, let's say up here, uh, L1 is 0.4 meters, meters, not millimeters. And then L2 is, I picked it, uh, one centimeter, so 0 0.01 meter. Okay, so I want to find what is the electric current, I1. What about I2? What about E1? What about E2? So this is the electric field in part one and then the electric field in two and then again back to one. So we want to find that. So let's start off with the loop rule. So remember the loop rule says that if I start at any point and I add up the changes in potential and I get back to that same point, I have to get to delta V equals zero. So let's do that here. So if I start right here and I go that way, what's my change in potential? Well, it's the battery voltage, which is EMF. And remember, EMF stands for electromotive force. It's not a force. It's kind of an archaic term, but we still stick with it, and I think it's not a bad idea. Now, what about this part? Now, I'm moving in the direction of the electric field E1 uh, over the length L1. So that's going to be a change in potential of negative E1 L1, right? Because the change, and I put both of these two pieces together as one wire. And then I have this piece down here. I have minus. E2, L2, because it has a different electric field and a different length. But once I get back to there, I should be at zero. So that's one equation. Okay. Now I know EMF, I know L1, I know L2, but I don't know E1 or E2. So that's going to be a problem. Um, I'm going to get another equation with uh, E1 and E2. So let's just solve this for E1 and uh, see what we get. So if I uh, add E1, L1 to both sides, I get E1, L1 equals EMF minus, I think I made a mistake. No, I didn't. Okay. Minus, well, I'll check it. This My answer might be wrong up here. So uh, minus, I'm just thinking out loud. So I'm going to add this to both sides. So I get EMF uh, and this E2, L. And I can divide both sides by L1. I get E1 equals EMF minus E2L over L1. Okay. Now let's use the junction rule. So what if I want to look at this junction right here? Then the electric current coming into that junction, which I'll call I1, has to be equal to the current going through out of that junction, which I'll call I2. So I can write this as I1 equals I2. But remember, our definition of current is I equals Q times N times A times U times E. So this is the value of the charge carrier, which is an electron. This is the number of carriers per volume. This is the cross-sectional area this is the electron mobility, and this is E. So over here, I'm going to get, for current one, I'm going to get Q in A1 U E1 equals Q in A2 U E2. They're both copper, so they have the same Q, they have the same N, they have the same U. So all these things cancel. And I get A1 E1 equals A2 E2. 
So I already saw for E1, uh, I should say up here, remember that A1 is going to be pi D1 over 2 squared. And then A2 equals, that's a cross-sectional area of a circular wire, pi D2 over 2 squared. And make sure you convert this to uh, D in meters, right, because everything else is in meters. So uh, D1 would be equal to 0.4 millimeters or 0 0.4 times 10 to the negative third meters. Okay. So that's how you can just calculate that. And I'm going to do that for you. So let's uh, solve this for uh, E2. So E2 is going to be equal to uh, A1 E1 over A2. Now I can use my expression from before for E1. And I remember I had E1 is equal to EMF minus E2 L2. I left off a 2 before over L1. So if I put that in here, I get E2 equals A1 over A2 times EMF minus E2 L2 over L1. Now, I have two E2s, so maybe I didn't do this the best way. Uh, so, I don't even know why I did that then. Okay, so let's multiply both sides. Let's get rid of this, because I need to, and let's bring the L1 with it. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, L1A2 over A1. L1A2 over A1. And so in this case, these cancel. And then I get EMF minus E2L2 equals L1 A2 E2 over A1. Now I can add this to both sides and I get EMF equals uh, E2 L2 plus L1 A2 E2 over A1. And now I can factor out the E2. L2 plus L1 A2 over A1. And then I can divide both sides by this to get E2 by itself. And so I get E2 equals EMF over L2 plus L1 A2 over A1. And then once I get, I know all these values, I can plug that in. And then once I get that, I can go back over here and find E2. So if I, and I did that, okay. But let's do one more thing. Let's find the electric current. So once I know uh, E1 and E2, I can say, I can go, oh, I already wrote it down. I already have it right here. So I can say I1 is Q in A1 U1, U E1. I2 equals Q in A2 U E2. So I'll, I'll have to, everything is just a number now. A number, a number, number, number. So I did that and I'll link, I, I actually printed it out this time just to show you. So this is the code that I did to calculate stuff. So these are all my constants right here. There's my EM, uh, EMF, another constant. And then here's that one equation where I actually, I actually solved this other way. I did the junction rule first. Uh, and then I solved for, uh, I did it, oh no, I did, I did, I'm sorry, I did it both ways. I get the same thing. And then I print those out and I get the following. So here you see a super high electric field, 146 uh, for the electric field in the tiny wire. Uh, and a very large, small electric field in the other wire. But the currents are the same, which should be no surprise because we set them equal to the same. But this gives about 0.7 amps, which seems fairly reasonable. It's a little bit high. Uh, I, I used an ideal battery. We'll talk about real batteries later, but that, that's it. So there you go. And I'll link to this code down below. And we'll do, I'm going to do this problem again, but in a resistance way. And this isn't necessarily better, but it does give a little bit more insight into uh, the electric field, and that's what I think is important about it.